Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's topic for presentation is suboccipital triangle of the neck. Objectives of presentation A case scenario Suboccipital triangle will be dealt under the following heading the location, boundaries, contents, and clinical significance. A 15 year old adolescent is admitted to the hospital yesterday. Uh, that person had got complaint of meningeal irritation. So that is projectile vomiting, intense headache. So the doctor has advised to take the CSF sample of this patient, but the patient's spine is deformed or scoliosis. So where do we do the lumbar puncture? So this is the spine of the patient. You can see it's deformed. We can't pop, we can't take the CSF now in this area because we don't know the spinal cord level now because the spine is being deformed. So where do exactly we do lumbar puncture? Answer will be dealt at the end of this video. So in the neck, neck is the cylindrical structure which is present in the body on three dimension but on side profile it is quadrangular. This neck on the lateral aspect a quadrangular neck is divided into two triangles. A posterior triangle with apex pointing up in the base directed towards the clavicle and the anterior triangle in which the base is directed towards the mandible and the apex is directed towards the sternum. Now this suboccipital triangle the suboccipital triangle is not same as occipital triangle. Occipital triangle is by the side of the neck. Suboccipital triangle is underneath the neck. It is approached from the posterior aspect. So that is the orientation of this triangle. The suboccipital triangle neither belongs to anterior triangle or posterior triangle. It is one of the separate triangle on the posterior aspect of the neck. So coming to the landmarks which we should know to gain access to the suboccipital triangle. This is an external occipital protuberance. This is the posterior surface of your skull. There will be one line at that level. It's called the superior nuchal line. It's on either side. Here it's represented only one side. Nuchal refers to neck. One more similar line will be there parallel to that. It's called as inferior nuchal line. So this all is occipital bone. This is the posterior margin of foramen magnum. This is the atlas vertebra. This is the posterior arch of atlas. And this is the posterior tubercle of atlas. Atlas doesn't have spine. If it has got spine, the first cervical vertebra of the atlas, then we can't extend our neck. So it has got a tubercle, posterior tubercle of atlas. This is the spine of the axis, the second cervical vertebra. Spine of the axis and this will be the transverse process of atlas. So this is the spine of the axis as already mentioned. Coming to the orientation of the muscles in this area. There is a muscle, we can see there are four muscles here. There is a muscle which is straight it's called rectus. It's going to the skull cap and it is behind and it is big. So we call it as rectus capitis posterior major. There's one more muscle in similar direction but it is tinier. So it's called rectus capitis posterior minor. Now here are two muscles which are neither vertical nor horizontal. So they are in which direction? Oblique direction. So this is the upper oblique, superior oblique, so lower oblique, inferior oblique. The complicated name for the same is oblicus capitis superioris this will be oblicus capitus inferioris that is a difficult name instead superior oblique inferior oblique of the suboccipital triangle is good enough so these are the four muscles which will be which will encounter in this region coming to the boundaries of this triangle this is a triangular area on the posterior aspect the boundaries include this medial wall medially one boundary this, the other two boundary will be lateral this is superolateral and this will be inferolateral so the medial boundary is formed by these two muscles, rectus capitis posterior major and rectus capitis posterior minor. The superolateral boundary will be superior oblique, the inferolateral boundary will be inferior oblique. So I repeat, the medial boundary is rectus capitis posterior major and minor, the superolateral boundary is superior oblique, the inferolateral boundary will be inferior oblique. The roof of this triangle is formed by the skin, superficial fascia and investing layer of deep cervical fascia like all the other triangles of the neck. In addition to this, there will be extra structures which will be overlying the roof. The neck from behind, it is cylindrical and projecting. This is because of huge muscle on either side of the spine. It's called semi-spinalis capitis. Like this one huge muscle is there on the back side of your neck. You can palpate in your body and see. There's one more muscle which is tiny and parallel to this. It's called longismus capitis. It's long muscle. It's going to the skull cap. So we call it as longismus capitis. There is one more tiny strap muscle. It's called splenius capitis. Splenius means strap. All are called capitus, meaning it's going to the skull cap. Come to the floor of this triangle, that is a suboccipital triangle. The floor is mainly formed by this structure. It's called the posterior arch of atlas. This structure. 
and this is the foramen magnum it's a part of occipital bone between this arch of atlas and the foramen magnum it can't be open like this in the living so it's covered by a membrane from behind it is called atlanto occipital membrane since it's from behind the appropriate name will be posterior atlanto occipital membrane so the floor is formed by posterior arch of atlas and posterior atlanto occipital membrane it's frequently asked in the examinations as well Coming to the contents of the suboccipital triangle, it won't be that simple. Suboccipital artery, suboccipital vein, suboccipital now. It won't be like that. So hence, carefully concentrate. Here, this is the most important content of this. Our hind brain is actually supplied by this. This artery will travel across the vertebra. Within the vertebra, there is one foramen in the transverse process. It's called as foramen transverse area. The artery is traveling, so it's called as vertebral artery. It has got various parts in the neck. Two parts are there in the suboccipital triangle. This is called the third part of the vertebral artery, the most important content. This will go and enter through the foramen magnum. It will enter into the skull to supply the hind brain. The other now, now seen over here is the suboccipital nerve. It's a dorsal ramae of first cervical nerve. It's a spinal nerve. It supplies these muscles which are forming the boundaries: rectus capitis posterior major, rectus capitis posterior minor, superior oblique, inferior oblique. All these muscles are supplied by this nerve. It's called the suboccipital nerve because it is present in suboccipital triangle. Then there will be on venous plexus. There is blue color plexus will be there over here. If that structure is there, we can't see any of this. So hence it is not drawn here. It is called a suboccipital venous plexus. It connects into the cranium via the emissary veins. Suboccipital venous plexus to relieve the pressure of the skull veins. These veins are necessary over here. Then the other contents which are seen in this picture are. This one, occipital artery, it is over there, but it is not exactly within the triangle, but it is related over there. Occipital artery supplies the scalp. There is one big nerve supplying the scalp. It's a sensory nerve of the scalp. It is winding across the inferior oblique and going upwards. That is creating a landmark for us to identify this triangle. This big nerve, cutaneous nerve of the scalp is called as greater occipital nerve. So that is a, also found in the boundary. The major content is this vertebral artery and the third part of the vertebral artery. Suboccipital now, suboccipital venous plexus. Coming back to the case scenario which we saw in the beginning, because of this spine, that person who is admitted with projectile vomiting and signs of meningeal irritation, we require CSF to be drawn, but we can't draw the CSF at the level of L3 L4 junction because the spine is deformed and we don't know the exact position of spinal cord because the spine is deformed. We may damage the spinal cord if you do the procedure from here. Hence, we should be able to do cisternal puncture. So, what is a cisternal puncture? It is puncturing the cerebellomedullary cistern. Cistern means a dilated space. We want CSF from cerebrospinal fluid around the brain, around the spinal cord also. It will be there. Usually, we will access around the spinal cord because of the ease of access. Here, vital structures are there like medulla oblongata. If the needle punctures medulla oblongata, vital centers like respiratory cardiovascular centers and all will be damaged, and personal immediate uh, death will be there of the person. So hence it is this kind of procedure is done rarely and a specialized neurologist will do this, anesthesiologist, neuroanesthesiologist. So this is called cisternal puncture. Cisternal means the cerebellomedullary system. This space where extra amount of uh, CSF pocket is there. But how is this approached via this triangle? What is this triangle? Suboccipital triangle. This is a cut section of posterior arch of atlas. This is a cut section of posterior margin of foramen magnum. Through this the needle is passed through the posterior atlanta occipital membrane i told you in the floor that structure of the floor of the suboccipital triangle to reach the cerebellomedullary system and the csf is drained either for examination of the csf on bacterial culture so the meningitis the cause will be known so that we can treat with appropriate antibiotics so this is called as cisternal puncture also called as cisternal tap we are tapping the csf from the surrounding the brain for examination purpose. So other clinical importance there will be lymph node everywhere in the body even here there will be some the lymph nodes they are called occipital lymph nodes enlargement of these lymph nodes suggests there is infection in the scalp area. So this is occipital lymphadenopathy. Thank you for watching my video and learning kindly subscribe and press the bell button like comment and share the video with your family and friends. Thank you once again.